Our next speaker uh, comes from Team Generos and they are Australia's largest EOS block producer. And uh, his name's Ralph. I'm also part of that team as well. And we've got Tom here who uh, is part of our team and we'll, we'll have another team member, Tim, coming later tonight. But today we're going to um, talk about EOS and the current um, hot topics of RAM speculation. You may know that uh, Generos, we are pledging to give a proportion of our profits to charity. So we're working on our charity statement at the moment, um, but hence that uh, Save the Whales uh, background. Um, so we're a social enterprise, so we plan to uh, be a high performing organisation that, uh, that generates profits that we can uh, funnel some of those profits back to charitable, um, uh, charitable endeavours. Uh, we're based in Australia and we have a very diverse team, so there's five of us and we come from um, various continents, so uh, myself from Vietnam, Tom's from China, Ralph's from Germany, uh, we've got an Australian and um, one of our members is Canadian and he's in Canada at the moment. So we want to promote scalable and uh, efficient block production uh, in Australia and uh, we feel that we're placed to, to provide that and provide that uh, geographical diversification for the EOS uh, network. And uh, as mentioned, we're going to give our, some of our block rewards back to, uh, to charity. So I'll hand over to uh, Ralph, who will take you through the second part of the presentation. Thanks, Ty. So, um, yeah, my wife on her last, her last speech and she said, no, 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 you have to change something. She has said, you have to tell them what you're going to tell them. Tell them and then tell them what you told them. So I'm going to tell you tonight what you're going to learn is um, generous, so who we are. Ty did already that part. Um, then we're talking about the scalability uh, dilemma, just a little bit. Um, then we talk about EOS IO, uh, about RAM speculation, and um, Ty will also finish with a little bit of our achievements. So scalability dilemma. So I'm not. Um, introducing blockchain and everything here. I, th I think everybody here knows already what it is. But the problem is we're trying to find a, a blockchain that meets three tra tra um, criteria. So we want to have it as decentralized as pos possible. We want to have it secure and we want to have it scalable. So they are the, tr the three problems. And um, there's different approaches to, to solve parts of those. Um, and so we want to talk about the different consensus mechanisms. So there's probably more than those, but the most famous ones are probably proof of work, which is Bitcoin, uh, or Bitcoin is using it. Um, like Ethereum as well is using it. Uh, there is proof of stake and Dash and all the master coins and um, uh, master node coins, they are using that, most of them at least. Uh, also Ethereum is wor uh, working towards changing theirs to, to that one. And then there's delegated proof of stake, which EOS and some other blockchains have been using, like BitShares, Steam, even um, Arc, um, Lisk, and some more. So just going into uh, some of those very quickly. I heard I only have about 10 minutes, so <laughs> I'm just going to speed through that. So proof of work, um, miners are trying to race uh, for a mathematical problem. So you need a lot of uh, hash power to do that. Um, the winner is uh, allowed to add their block to the blockchain, um, and the winner is rewarded with blocks. So with bit, uh, sorry, with Bitcoin. Um, so Bitcoin software is configured with a roughly 10-minute block time. So that means it will auto-adjust. So if there's more hash power, it will make it difficult, more difficult, the the puzzle to solve. Um, if the hash power is removed from the network, it, it will make it easier the next time around. So then. Um, so 51% attack vector, so we're talking about attacks and safety now. Everybody probably has heard about that, so Bitcoin is getting more and more centralized in terms of the, the pools that are mining it. So if the, the big three mining pools, if they um, collude, they would be able to attack the, the network because they have more than 51% of hash power together. Um, the problem with proof of work also is slow transaction speed and, and low throughput. So for Bitcoin, it's 10 minutes for uh, creating a block, but it's actually more than 60 minutes. I think somebody said 
um, 70 minutes roughly at the moment until you can be sure that the transaction is um, unmutable. So it's confirmed and it has been confirmed with multiple blocks behind it. I won't go into too much detail there. Uh, and you only get around three transactions per second throughput, which is limited by the block size. And there's a lot about, a lot about debate about that, as you've probably noticed. Um, so it's not very ener energy efficient. And if you've been to the meet, uh, meetup last Wednesday, we had a speaker, Hass, talking about that in, uh, at length. Um, he, there are still arguments for it. So it's still saying, um, even though it uses a lot of energy, it's worth it. But again, I won't go too much into, into detail, but it's about the security. So proof of work is security based on hash power. I uh, already talked about the three mining pools there. So if we put that into, the, into this triangle, I would put proof of work pretty, pretty close to the security side. It's not anymore very decentralized, although in theory it is, like anybody could install it, but all the, the mining pools really have the power, so it's not really very decentralized. And scalability, well, yeah, there are solutions, proposals out there, and Lightning Network came live and is being criticized for all sorts of things. Um, so they're trying to solve some of that. But anyway, there are other approaches to that. So proof of uh, stake has a, has a different kind of model. Uh, there's not miners, there's validators, and anybody can be a, a validator. So it's a similar concept, you install the software and you buy coins, and then your stake uh, is used, uh, you can be a validator with the weight of the stake, or the number of coins that you have. So the validators um, take turns proposing the block, but it depends on how much stake you have, if you're choosing as the validator or not. Um, so yeah, the bigger your stake, the more likely it is for you. It's more environmentally friendly because there's no race for, like there's no mathematical problem to solve. It's, it's really just about the stake. That's why it's called proof of stake. So transaction speed is um, a bit back, better, better. So Dash, for example, has, I think, 15 minutes uh, until your transactions are confirmed. And it gets uh, around 28 transactions per second throughput. Um, the problem with that is you have to be online all the time in order to make your stake count. So now we've got um, the trilemma triangle again. And you can see that delegated proof of stake is, um, I placed it a little bit further into the middle. So it's uh, still relatively secure, but not as secure as some people argue uh, as proof of work. It's relatively decentralized because anybody could install it. Uh, and scalability is a little bit closer towards that. But yeah, still not, still not ideal. So. Um, Dan Larimer invented a, a new model called delegated proof of stake, uh, in that you have elected validators. So not everybody is and can be a validator. Of course, you can apply to be a validator, but that doesn't mean that you will become one. Um, so in the EOS network, that is called um, block producer. And there are 21 block producers. So, so I'm mixing up explaining delegated proof of stake and EOS a little bit because there's different concepts. For example, BitShares is also delegated proof of stake, but they call it witnesses, for example. Um, so in, in EOS, which is delegated proof of stake, you have 21 block producers, and you have uh, a number of standbys, and we are currently one of them. Um, there is a lot to be explained about that as well and how that works. We'll see how much time we've got there maybe in the Q&A afterwards. So block producers are voted in with stake deposits. Um, that means you can, if you have EOS, you can vote for block producers. Um, the good thing is you don't have to stay online. You just place your vote and then you're, you're done. You don't have to, so your vote counts. Still, you don't have to stay online all the time. Um, and you don't have to maintain a software like if you want to be a validator yourself, which means you have to keep updating the software and things like that. Uh, block producers uh, have a fixed schedule to propose the next block. So there's also no um, competition as such. There's a schedule. The, um, the 21 gets scheduled, so everyone has their turn. Therefore, it's more environmentally friendly because you don't have to have that hash power. Uh, it's also very fast because it's much more predictable. and um, because you have a schedule. 
So in, in EOS, you get roughly three second uh, confirmation time, although at the moment it's a bit lower still, but that's the, that's the goal. And you get at the moment around 1,000 th plus transactions of throughput. Um, again, this is, um, additionally, you can scale that with side chains and with uh, some other improvements that are coming out for the software. So it's just the current state and it's already multiple, many times faster. So where would I put that? I would put that pretty close into the middle already. So it's, it's a good balance. People argue, well, you have 21 block producers, so it is pretty centralized. But then if you look at the mining pools and you only have three or four that control the network, I would say 21 is pretty decentralized. You have the security with the stake because you don't want, uh, the, so people wouldn't attack their own network if they have a lot of stake in it. That's the basic concept in, in one sentence. And scalability because of the 21, limiting it to 21 and having that scheduled. So it's, it's a pretty good compromise and it's a very good model, we believe. So EOS has the first um, governed blockchain model as well, properly governed. Voting, I'll skip a little bit uh, because I've mentioned it many times already before. Uh, maybe just very briefly, if you have if you have EOS, you can vote for up to 30 block producers per token that you own. Um, so if you have some, then vote for us, <laughs> please. <laughs> we have the, the EOS toolkit, which is eostoolkit.io, and you can just click on the on the top right corner. There is a button say vote for generals, so to make it very easy. Uh, and Tim uh, Tim is working on some content and explaining step by step how all of that works as well. Mm. So thanks, Tim. <laughs> Um, so in terms of governance, um, EOS has a, a constitution, and a lot of people might not even know, but if you start using EOS, you pretty much agree to abide by the constitution. So better have a read. And the constitution is uh, displayed in our EOS toolkit as the home page. So maybe go there and see what it's all about. It's just an interim constitution. It hasn't been um, voted for. So currently there is a referendum uh, being written, so a referendum smart contract, so that the um, people that own EOS actually can vote for the constitution, and there might be a change to the constitution coming coming in as well. Big debates about that. Um, and it has EOS also has an arbitration process. So in, in so to avoid things like uh, with Bitcoin and other networks where you had to hard fork because of bugs in the software, like parity bugs, everybody probably knows about. Um, the 21 block producers together with the arbitration forum are supposed to be able to fix those problems without hard forking the network. Uh, and this is what a, what a contract looks like. So for example, if you delegate bandwidth, which is a concept of EOS, which I won't go into detail right now, then our toolkit will also display the Ricardian contract and it says exactly that um, the intent of the activity that you're performing on the network. So it's uh, it's it is, there's code, but there's also recording contracts so you know what is supposed to happen. And if there's a discrepancy between the two, then, so a bug, pretty much, we can fix it and just fix it according to the Ricardian contract. That's how that works in short. So talking a little bit about uh, RAM, it's a, it's a hot topic. Uh, slowly already dying down because the price is dying down and then most people are not so interested <laughs> anymore. But um, some people have noticed price uh, of RAM going up by a few thousand percent from, from the beginning. So I think when we met about a month ago here, I mentioned some people should look into RAM trading. <laughs> so maybe it's my fault that I'm um, sorry. <laughs> um, so yeah, so RAM is a, is a, is a rare source uh, in, in the EOS network. At the moment, uh, we have provisioned 48 gigabyte of RAM. Obviously, that can be increased and will be increased, but it, we kept it low actually in order to have some way of still increasing the RAM in, if the RAM speculation happened, which it did. So there's lots of different proposals out there, like heaps of them, and I can't even keep up reading them all. But there is um, proposals about increasing the RAM slowly. So Dan was saying to increase um, the RAM by 20% a year, I believe it was. Then there's other solutions saying, well, the EOS is traded internally in a RAM contact and the fee is going in there and the actual, yeah, so 
to Ashita, but so people are saying to burn some of that um, to decrease the value in there to uh, make it less incentive for the speculators to speculate. It will, it will not stop them, but it makes it more riskier to do that. And then there's concepts that say, well, the, right, the ramp price should increase to a certain amount and then it should decrease again. Uh, it's really complex and you, you kind of have to be an economist to understand it all, um, which I'm not. So I'm not trying to explain everything to you guys, but um, the, if you are on Medium or Steemit, there's many people writing articles about it, so I can just recommend you guys, if you're interested in that topic, to have a look. And we can also chat a little bit more after, after this. But. So another solution, maybe not a solution, but a workaround uh, we've been working on as well is the poor man token. Um, so unfortunately, Nathan isn't here tonight because he actually implemented this poor man token. But basically, the idea is... Uh, so why do we need RAM? Um, if you want to, to build a, a DAP, you need RAM for uh, managing data, pretty much. So if you want to store information, if you want to create a token and distribute it to people, so doing an airdrop, things like that, you need RAM to store the ledger details, pretty much. So it is, with the RAM price increasing, it's more and more expensive to do an airdrop or to build a DAP. So at least for the airdrop, we implemented a little poor man's token there so that people can sign up and use their own RAM to, um, to be part of that airdrop or airdrops that are being built on top of the poor man token. Because otherwise, the person who is doing the airdrop has to upfront that cost and has to buy RAM to, um, and distribute it to all the people that are supposed to get part of the airdrop. So we did upfront that cost, we bought some RAM, and if you're interested in, in doing an airdrop, you can use um, our concept, and you can get people to sign up for it with their own RAM, and you can then, then register your own tokens on top of that. That's the basic concept, and if you're interested in it, you can just Google poor man token, and uh, I've tested it, it's the first hit in Google, and it'll come up with um, two things with, with our Steam it article about the topic and also with our GitHub repository. So this is the GitHub repository which hosts the code behind that. So if you're technical, feel free to check it out. It's written in, in C++. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. It only has a few methods in it. So it should be easy to understand if you're technical. Um, yeah, I think I've kind of summed those two up together. So you can um, sign up for the airdrop, for the, for the poor man token in our toolkit as well. So just jump on there. Tim just did a video on that and will be uploaded tonight, I heard. <laughs> How it works, it's pretty much a, more or less a two-click process. I think you need to sign up. Well, first of all, you need to sign up and scatter, but if all of that is set up, then it's pretty straightforward to claim that. And initially, it'll show zero, so don't get scared if you don't see anything in it, because the airdrop or no airdrop really has happened. It's just a sign up for this. And we just regard it as an experiment, so don't try to make money out of this. It's just an experiment, and we hope you participate in that experiment, and we'll see where it goes from here. Okay, cool. Yeah, so I just wanted to, to explain that um, with regard to uh, the poor man token, the way it, it um, allows DAP developers to not have to pay for that high cost of RAM is that the recipient of the token um, it stumps up their own RAM to receive the coin. So that, that's how it reduces the, the cost of, of launching a DAP. Um, so I just want to go through quickly some of our achievements so far. Um, as I mentioned, we're, we're the number one block, uh, standby block producer in Australia, and our goal is to get to, to top 20 um, and beyond. Um, so we're very high profile within the community. So we've, we've been publicly endorsed, especially with our toolkit, um, uh, by the, um, our other block producer peers around the world. Um, <clears throat> currently, we're, we hover from 29 to, to about 42. Um, so currently, we're 38. Um, as of uh, today. So, um, so that's pretty good. So our vote is actually increasing all the time, but as uh, more people vote and more block producers come on board, um, the percentage, um, the percentage is, it goes down a little bit, but, but our uh, total number of votes do go up. Um, so if you do have any EOS, please vote for us. Um, 
we've also launched our EOS toolkit, and that has some tools where you can stake and unstake your EOS, transfer your EOS, uh, check your account balance, and, and other useful things, uh, like buying RAM, if, if you want to speculate on RAM. And um, yeah, so just to close, what have you learned tonight? So who, who we are, so we, we're generous. Um, Ralph took you through the scalability trilemma, um, and also EOS, the EOS platform. Uh, RAM speculation and what we've achieved. So, um, do we have any questions for us tonight? How many block, block producers are there in total? So, there's, there's 21 official block producers, so they're, they're the ones with the 21 most votes. Yeah. Um, then there's uh, standby block producers, so currently it's about the top 50. Um, that are standby. Um, the difference is that uh, the block producers actually uh, create the blocks. The standbys are there. They, they need uh, systems waiting in the wings in standby in case uh, one of the block producers goes offline and then they can jump in and, and become a block producer. Um, but currently there's, there's over there's 100. There's more than 300 um, 3, 391, I just checked. 391. <laughs> yeah. So it grows and grows uh, every day. Uh, Any other questions? George? So what are you doing in the meetups? <laughs> what are we doing? With, uh, so we've got our strategy. Uh, uh, so we've got meetups where um, we're going to do an EOS specific meetup uh, soon. We've got our strategy day with our team on Sunday. So we've got a big whiteboarding session. Um, and then we'd, yeah, so we're working on our, our charity statement and also um, our strategy and our DAPS development for the next uh, six months. Uh, we're also, uh, if you've checked our website, we also talk about um, making gift giving transparent um, as well uh, by developing our own DAPS. So these are some things that we're working on and uh, pretty soon we'll be able to announce them for you. And also, um, sorry, standbys also have to actually be ready all the time, so that doesn't mean that we're just sitting there <laughs> like this. No, we actually have to make sure our hardware is always up and running, um, implement bug fixes, connect with the other block producers. Um, so there's calls that we have to attend where topics are discussed about scalability, RAM, and this and that. So there's quite a lot actually under the hood that's not... <laughs> yeah, and the calls start usually about 11 p.m. at night. <laughs> yeah, it's fun. <laughs> <Being> yeah. Australia. <laughs> Monitoring the Telegram is quite a job within that, itself. That is a full-time job, just monitoring Telegram, that's true. Like, we need some community managers, anyone? <laughs> you can speak to me afterwards. <laughs> um, so Darren, did you have a...? I, yeah, um, just something about, I noticed with the EOS Toolkit and the Strategy Day, I noticed that there's a lot of things that was. No, EOS Tracker. Which is trying to track the wallets of the block producers and the candidates, namely both the EOS the generates wallet and EOS Beer and a few others, just to see what the balances were and where the transactions were going. Yeah. And I couldn't get any get any registration like within the address when I did search for it in the toolkit or the EOS track. Right. But any other like I could track my addresses. Mm. I could put mine in there and all my results showed up and what my Which which address were, were you trying to track? The Oz one generous? Yeah, yeah, that yeah. one. And uh, EOS fees, I tried that okay. address um, as well. I've checked, um, Alan seems to work. We have a few other addresses, so we move it. Um, oh yeah, I found out how to do it later when I went into into a, a Telegram chat. But um, it was it wasn't as easy to track as, as any other EOS address. Like if I tried to search by name in, in the toolkit, it didn't show up. But if I okay, well, we, we can do that later, because um, usually... No, no, we're... It was a thing with block producers in general, just yeah. candidates or block producers. If you tried searching their public address, you couldn't get any... Okay, okay. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll take... Yeah, yeah there could be... Yeah, actually, it's an interesting question. I've noticed some of that as well on some some of the uh, EOS, uh, what are they called, trackers, uh, because there are many out there, a little bit... Well, I, I'm not sure buggy, but maybe some features missing. Yeah. It could be related to things like that we have using multi-signatures or something like that, and some of those don't support that. Like, I think you just need to switch to another um, EOS Explorer, Blockchain Explorer, and then you should be able to see those transactions. So what? Is, so the toolkit's going through an Explorer? No, no, the, not the, the toolkit. The search itself. results through the toolkit. No, not the toolkit. It's, no, the toolkit is connected to our own um, network, so we have 
we have a full node and a, and a block producer running. Yeah. Um, so that's connected to us. But I'm not sure you talked about some other trackers where you can't see. Uh, we are tracker, of course. We are tracker. No, that's not our tracker. Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, so I, don't, I can't speak for that. I can't remember yeah. the domain of the one that actually worked. Okay. Somebody just sent me a link and then I. And then I just put okay. your name at the end of the number. Yeah. Right. Okay. And then I found the EOS bank Yeah. So, so we've checked our, our um, account name on our EOS toolkit.io and, and it's there. So um, we can do, go offline, we'll have a check afterwards. Yeah. Yeah. I was just wondering what it was because it wasn't just your, your address, like it was everything else that I checked. Yeah, and sometimes you have to click find, you can't just press enter. Um, enter yeah. doesn't return something. Yeah. 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 Anyway. All right, cool. Any other questions? Shui, yeah. uh, For uh, buy and sell RAM, um, on your website or uh, just in general, uh, is there a kind of a order book that I could see a buyers and sellers at the same time? Is that no, um, no, sorry. So um, the RAM, how it works is it's using the banker algorithm, and there is no direct um, buying and selling between people. You buy it from the system and you sell it back to the system. So there's no uh, such thing really as uh, order books. So the Banco algorithm, as RAM becomes scarce, it prices it higher, and and that's that's what happened as people buy more and more of it. Um, it just got higher and higher. Oh, okay, yeah, I see. But uh, it's being dumped uh, at the moment. You can see who's recently sold and recently bought, but it's not based off a traditional exchange where you know that uh, signifies the demand. Uh -huh. yeah. I thought the, yeah. the Bancor algorithm was supposed to sort of regulate that to stop the, the price from... Right, right. Um, um, no, it is... No, the idea really between the Bancor algorithm was to make it expensive just before the system runs out of RAM, so that we don't immediately run out of RAM. That was actually the, the purpose of it, but it wasn't considered that... Um, the speculators would misuse the system such strongly. So, and then there was also a small bug in it, which uh, they had, they had to fix. <laughs> yeah. Don't tell me. <laughs> <laughs> I hope we didn't write the algorithm. <laughs> cool. Any, any last questions? Oh, sorry, Pat. So, is there a way to find who are the buyers? Uh, yeah, you can. Um, so, all the transactions are stored in the blockchain. You can, uh, you can actually have a look at the, I have never actually tried it, but if you go to the contract for the RAM, mm -hmm. you should be able to see all the transactions coming in and out. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. yeah so, so which means uh, you could estimate uh, the buyer, how many, uh, well, how much RAM uh, that buyer is currently holding. Right? Yes, you can. There's actually websites out there that are showing the whales, the RAM, the RAM whales, <laughs> uh, and there are some really big RAM whales out there. I think they're all trying to scale out now because they're getting scared that the price is dumping. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah. Uh, no, actually, the last question is that uh, since RAM is uh, limited by constitution or, 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 or uh, by whatever the, the technical reason is, and uh, who is going to dictate how much RAM that it will put into the system? Yeah, so it's pretty much uh, run by the community, so there will be a constitution and all that, but at the moment it's decided by the block um, producers themselves, and they decided to start with 64 gigabyte of RAM, um, so that there is still some uh, upper limit, because at the moment I think there's a physical limit of like roughly four terabyte that can be put into one machine, and, and until we have side chains and um, inter-blockchain communication, which is supposed to come out in, within the next six months, uh, we are limited to this. So we are trying to in slowly increase RAM only. Yeah, so this is uh, all about economy, uh, uh, supply and demand. Right? If you suddenly increase supply, I mean, definitely the price is going to fall. Mm. So uh, uh, a sudden dramatic increase in supply, do you see it? Is that a technical pass possible for kind of one decision overnight and suddenly we double the amount? Of yes. 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 That's definitely a possibility. Possibility, absolutely, yeah. Oh, okay. I guess that's one of the reasons why they didn't suspect that people would go so crazy buying RAM. Because yeah. you buy Bitcoin because it's limited in the supply, right? And you know the inflation rate yeah. that's right now. Um, we didn't, I, I wouldn't be buying RAM if it could double tomorrow. Right, yeah, you know, exactly. that's my question. Fall, sort of fall, like, yeah. Most people wouldn't think that, that would do that. So it's like it's a mystery to me why anybody would want to speculate on it. But there you go. People do it. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, thank you.
Thanks, Shwe Park. Any last questions? Um, so we'll be around for, for um, if you want questions or look at some, some systems. Is there? Yep. Cool. All right. A round of applause for Ralph. He did a great presentation. Yeah. Um, thank you. So thanks for coming tonight. So um, tell your friends about it. Bring your friends next time. Love to see you again. Uh, we'll move to the free form format now. So yeah, grab a drink and, and chat and uh, network. So thanks, guys. Click like and subscribe and join me on this cryptocurrency affair. Just because it's double doesn't mean it's a bubble.